Hello and welcome to the Arlovsky Consulting GBR. My name is Alexander Arlovsky. I am CEO of this company. And today I would like to present the services of my company. So what we do? We do software development and quality assurance. We do help our clients to understand their requirements. We create real and very honest estimates how we do our solutions for our clients. We have experts in, in Unity 3D game development. We have experts in the cybersecurity area, both for offense and defense implementations. So if you're interested, you can reach us via following websites, our main page, our virtual forum, and lately added our social network to stay in touch with us on 24 seven basis. So contact us and i will be very happy to speak with you in person we always find solutions for clients thank you very much and here you go c sharp generics and collections very important topics from this programming language from the book head first c sharp here is my ideas about those topics first about generics generics allowing you to precisely say what you expect in your collection. It can be very general or it can be very precise. Uh, one interesting observation about generics, they can be very verbose, meaning hard to understand and, and hard to figure out what exactly the expression, the given expression of generics have as a meaning. Maybe if you debug, you will understand more, but I personally not in favor of debugging. It is a necessary tool and the work uh, flow, but I'm not pretty happy with using of debugger. For me, if you use debugger, it meaning your code have such bad defect that you actually pushed to use a debugger. But generics, they're pretty cool if you use them right and what about collections the book present collections pretty averagely yes pretty averagely you have examples you have explanations for list for dictionary and some from for other collections types but anyway, for collections, you need to always look into the official Microsoft documentation anyways, because each collection type have own set of methods, which you can use. And I can only say it is a cool programming language feature, which normally all object oriented programming languages have. But yeah, here it is. I have a diagram which did not created by me but created by another consultant from another company i currently can't recall but it is in public domain so this picture originally was from the java programming language but i think it can be applied to the c sharp because the similarities are pretty yeah, pretty near so they basically in, in the collections understanding Java is a sharp one, one is the same thing. Why am I showing you this diagram? Because the book itself m kind of mentioning the importance of each given collection. Like what is the difference between tree set? What is the be be difference between list? Like how you sort your collection, how you add to collection how you remove items from the collection but this diagram give you kind of really cool mindset and with this diagram you can exactly pinpoint how you precisely can use given type of collection which you need to use and this is what this book had first actually missed as a point Another point which I would like to add uh, to the collections description in the book, uh, thread safety. 
I know people who are basically newbie, they don't understand the concept behind the thread. And I will hopefully describe it later. But I can only say it goes together. Collection and thread, they're going together. You need to differentiate how safe your collection data type is when you use it in thread type situation. And let me show you the example which I prepared for the given topics, collections and generics. Okay, you have the code. This is my example. It's already on GitHub. You can look it up. So what I'm what I decided to present as example for the topics of generics, collections and interfaces. I decided to create an example, a simple uh, banking applications, but it's, it is not for the production. It's just for the case of example, how you can use interfaces, generics and collections. So as you can see, I have created chapter eight test class which presents the topics and what is actually doing i'm creating bank and i'm creating clients then i call the bank to add the clients of course in the real case situation you, you need to authenticate that you are allowed to do such operation but this, this is a pretty simplified example this is not for the production i repeat this is not for the production and I'm adding two banking clients to the bank and see did I actually did it actually worked. So let me run the test. And you can see create many bank clients did worked out. What about bank bank it, itself? I have written as I always do in test driven development style. So I have here pretty basic uh, tests. I'm creating the bank, adding to the bank lines and see does bank can actually add those clients, get amount of clients. And then I uh, actually put a message, welcoming message, because of course it's, <laughs> I would like to have a, a polite bank, which can greet the clients and let me run all of the tests from the bank for the bank bank test let me see bank test run it so i have cases add client to the bank creation of the bank storing clients to the bank yeah and it's basically simplified version now let's go to the code actual implementation so what i have created maybe i will show you interface first the interface as the book describes is a thing of the contract it pushes you to implement the given methods in the interface and and it is at some point very important because if you want to make sure that if you have many classes which need to have an observable behavior because object oriented programming it's all about behavior of your classes so it's basically important to have the interface i personally tend to use interfaces not a lot i i prefer to have basically more quality unit tests but you can use interface like last opportunity assurance to to the classes uh, which you have in your system that the behavior is well defined and i have three methods at bank client get amount of clients and so on which must be implemented by the bank i have here the collection of the list of course and here i using add bank client of course in the production you need to make sure that you have unique client so as i said earlier it's not for the production it's just for the learning opportunities example 
And here you have the implementation, pretty well defined, not too much to say. What about client? Uh, client test pretty simply. I can I test that I can create a bank client object. I make sure that I have 12 numbers like generator type thing. Um, this can be just for fun. I just done it like some kata basically, but it is just to make sure that uh, it have some banks stuff processes. Uh, but this is like actually for just for fun was done by me. It was not like a description in the book, but let me run it. You see it's passes. So I, my clients always generate 12 numbers, identifying number. The idea was like to have on the side of the bank, uh, kind of method, which approves that this is a valid authentication number. This was my idea, but I just wrote this uh, part of the code. If you <laughs> think uh, that you can do better, just write test and then con c contact me and show me what you have done actually. Make a pull request. Uh, so, and this is what this client looks like. The same goes to the interface. The client have a, a must have the implementation of the interface iClient type alphabet. Uh, naming was not like which I like it a lot for this interface, but this is just for learning opportunities. So naming is a kind of problematic thing in in real practice, but I decided to use such notation. And as you can see, bank client <coughs> is pushed to the implementation of the interface. And this is how I, I done it. I generating the number. This I took from one site, public domain, but it works. Uh, but finally, final point. Let me close this chapter. Generics really can be very verbose, unnecessary verbose, maybe in some situations unnecessary evil. Uh, collections, cool data type, which you most certainly should try out, different type of data structures, because it have native methods for items insertion, items deletion, item search items indexing so if you at some point need a data structure you can try out collections and see how it works out for you but i say the book had first c sharp gives good introduction into those topics maybe f like for my taste not enough good introduction but still it is a uh, really good examples and I hope that you learn something from it and you continue to work through this book as I do and this is my result so thank you for watching till to the next part hello so finally unity 3d lab number eight from the head first C sharp book. Uh, some quick observations about the stuff. The code itself was not easy to maintain. I tried to do the best possible uh, job to separate the concerns. And let me show you the game which I took from the book. It needs some time to spin up. Now it's spinning. You don't see uh, the game is launched. I click on the button play again. Now you see the output. The same goes to the uh, other screen. Uh, let me quickly say what's happening. 
so the game launches in the game over mode I, when I click button play again I start I have a short amount of time to to do something about okay and let me do it like that let me can I move the stuff where is my camera I think uh, it's kind of sometimes difficult ah now now you see so this is what I see on, in my game screen view I click the button play again and then I start to click on the balls and the counter start rolling so nothing happened now uh, I wasn't fast enough so basically I click on the balls and there are yeah I have some kind of time to stop until the balls are created amount of balls pretty fast and then I need to play again maybe I should move the screen ah, now now it's better so once again this is a complete game from the book head first uh, c-sharp I click on the button play again now I click on the balls and the trick of the game to cl quickly click on the balls between be before the balls are completely uh, created so the I am fighting against uh, creation of the balls when I he reach the like number 15 like so and that's it so this is basically the game now what about the code let me quickly stop it now let's switch to the coding part of the screen so let me quickly go they're happening a lot a lot of things but this book try to once again to combine a lot of things in one place which I don't like it's just bad design smell maybe kind of rush the author was rushed to produce the source code and he rushed through the source code but I kind of have different approach so I have class for the scores of the game scoreboard I have uh, what I have differently uh, I, uh, I have here stuff which is uh, referenced by this statements sorry <laughs> this, this is the translation which I have in my mind sometimes uh, not quick enough so you have statements here uh, with which I get access to the elements of UI in Unity 3D that was not mentioned in the book and you will find this code in on my github it's freely available so another thing which I have used fixed update it's it's better for the time thing because original code was with update and it was Im impossible to to process the event mouse click event properly now let me see what I have done differently I'm using curcoroutine not the other method for the waiting period I find it more accurate and more um, easy easy to easy to use what is the other things which I have done better than in the book basically the stuff with the accessing the data like scoreboard is a different completely different class of course when I click button to start the game I need to initialize the, the initial values for the scoreboard class and this is what I do in this start game method uh, still some things which I not really liked it was like um, if you have in UI the methods like following stuff let me show you this thing I don't like I think they are better approach to 
to connect to UI the invocation of the method start game method I mean like any method from your script but this was not this is quick and dirty way and I done it because I just running uh, running out of time too so this should be sufficient what about tests uh, the initial test were written like check if initial number of balls correct check if max balls is set up like all of the tests were basically general nature because uh, once again I try to separate the concerns it's it's my my thing I don't like to mix stuff together and hope that it works and let me show you scoreboards uh, so you see basically I had my initial values initialized in separate class and, and it's accessing and I have all things which you find the books which are st stored in the game controller and I, I try to refactor it successfully I must say and final conclusion on Unity in this book like by combine learning C sharp with learning game environment engine I'm not sure this is useful for the people who are just starting it's kind of strange approach to me I'm j just seeing this for the first time but if you're a newbie if you struggle maybe it's the best the best way to learn unity just pick the course and learn unity through the course you learn c sharp a lot from the book but unity stuff is um, not satisfactory of the quality which i i would prefer maybe for the people who don't have such high standards like me would take this thing uh, like okay experience but for me it's major no go I'm, I'm sorry about that but this is what I think about unity learning with uh, head first book you can achieve some results like I did but I'm not I'm not a newbie in unity 3d I have previous uh, projects and I just refreshing my knowledge by doing this book and yeah so here it is unity 3d lab or works i'll check it to the github and that's it for this part thank you for watching and here we go c sharp threads so what about threads this topic this particular topic is not covered in the book head first c sharp and i just would like to add some caveats on it as you can see threads are generally can be represented by railways on which you put the trains and i will explain it later what is all meaning what is important about threads threads allowing to create processes for very special business reasons very important ones think about stock exchange uh, think about <coughs> stuff like multiple um, actions processes at one time l like ebay and you can use threads in the ui in the windows presentation framework ui of of the windows and then you can actually utilize full potential of multi-core CPU, CPU capabilities if you use threads. Let me show you an example. So, so what we have here, let me go quickly about basic stuff. I have train. I can set up his name, his number of the train, and then I just output the name and the number of the train. I don't need to state that is a, a class which can be used in the thread concern. Just for simplicity, simple class. I have a test 
for this class, which I actually can run, run the test. Run test run finished, and you can see train test, all passing, simply test, and then I have a train station. Train station, uh, it has actual example how to use the threads. So, threads are allowing you to create separate processes which run one by one and independent from each other. So you have each thread which runs separately from the each other. You create them at one place but you don't control the flow of execution in the thread itself, which you did create it. Major pain point of the threads when you have something, something shareable between the threads. But I will not cover this topic of interlocking of threads. I think there are enough information about how to do that in the internet. But I just want to give you an, a general idea what actually threads meaning. So I creating in this particular example three threads, one for the main railway station, one for the train and another one for the another train. So I have train one, train two. So and it runs like following. Let me run it. So of course hello world it is from the main program. I just utilize the main program for that. And you have here welcome message from the train station. It prepares the trains for start and then trains created. Train 1 is a separate process. Train 2 is a separate process. And they work separately. You see the uh, messages. This is just show you that they are started. Of course, I, I theoretically, theoretically can add some behavior that you see the separation, but it would only complicate the example. I just, I, I like plain simple example at first. But the main reason why you should understand threads. Threads use in the day-to-day -day life of the programmer. They're really important. And if you know how it works, you can do really complex stuff. My best advice first, you write sequential, sequentially your business logic, and then you try to refactor it to the multi-trading logic. It's just um, common sense to use such practice. Because if you think uh, immediately of multi-trading environment and multi-trading application, you can uh, make bad design, software design decisions and I just wish you that you try to do the right job at the given task, which you as a programmer probably some one of the day discover or given will, <laughs> the task will, given, will be given to you. But this is example of threads. Each thread started at one place but each trace runs separately, it has own execution flow. Okay, let's go back to the conclusion. And what we have at the end of this tutorial? Well, the book had first C sharp is interesting case. Surely you learn a lot from it. I did actually update my knowledge about some topics, but um, I'm kind of perplexed about the order of the topics which you have in this book. Uh, at some point, this book feels a little bit uh, rushed. I mean, like some topics were not point they were not selected uh, in such a way that it's easy uh, to switch from one topic to another. And then 
you have introduction into the VPF UI and the Unity, which actually can be a two separate courses or two separate books. Uh, I can only say it is good for the making hands dirty, but it is not good to understand it and, and learn it properly. If you buy this book, Head First C Sharp for learning Unity 3D, I think you will be disappointed. If you buy this book to learn how to program a VPF UI, uh, you will be too disappointed. So it is not best the best uh, book which I have seen on the market about programming, but it is as I can honestly can say it's on the average. It, it is still a learning reference material which you can take and receive some results, but it is not it is not uh, like the best, the best uh, which you have in your case. Additionally, following topics are not uh, are covered, I, and I did not present them because I find it kind of uh, not necessary. But you can always find it material in in the internet, like a link. It was interesting chapter, but. It feels like more uh, structured query language. Uh, for me, it was not uh, so big topic to, to present. Lambda, of course, was interesting one, but it is kind of one and the same. Just uh, it, it allow you to create shortcuts in your source code. You have expression, you have a statement, which you assign to the expression, and that's it. Topic of the serialization. Uh, topic of the serialization was an um, interesting one, but uh, once again, there are a lot of information how to do the serialization and what not to do at serialization. Then another topic about UTF, characters and coding. I find it kind of strange uh, because, I mean, characters, you have a lot of native C-sharp methods which you can use for working with characters and strings, there's nothing actually to add about. Maybe if you have a legacy system and you need to make some encoding, maybe in such case you will gain knowledge from the book. Pretty important chapter was ab about object lifetime and how actually the objects in C Sharp behave. Well, I find it very strange that this topic actually presented at the end of the book, not at the beginning. I actually expected that the book author would take this topic to the front of the book. Exceptions. Mm, exceptions always kind of splitting groups of programmers. Some programmers say, no, you need to use as more exceptions as you can. Um, I'm of about of opinion that exceptions should be handled at the places where actually it makes sense. If you have places in your code where you can avoid exceptions by doing unit testing, by ensuring that your type safety is maintainable, then you probably in such case would not use exceptions because if you if you done all correctly your programming work and your code does not raise exceptions, you will not need an exception. Basically, most times exceptions, it's about I.O., input-output, like files, like server connections, there you can probably would see an exception. And of course, some crazy business rules, which uh, some applications would have, like about, I don't know, security and stuff. Garbage collection topic. Um, I personally tend to not to pick my hand into the C sharp garbage collection just because it handles very well. So if you have an instance of an object and this instance not referenced by any, by any other object, then it will be uh, garbage collected automatically, and that's it. Sure, you have 
some crazy cases where speed of the data is important and maybe then you will get some gains but i'm 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 too agree with the book out about that you can probably shoot in the foot if you use uh, garbage collection directly and basically that's it about the book and the stuff i uh, wanted to present uh, this topic and uh, trade life cycle but i mean there are enough information i presented my case how you can simply run trade threads it's not a production example sure but it is good idea how actually you can uh, call the threads uh, like in java you have interfaces which you can use to make sure that your class is um, able to be handled as a thread in C sharp you have another way how to do that but major point of the threads which you should consider data types which you use in the thread should be thread safety so this means that if you have multiple threads and your data types which you use for your data when they are not thread safe this means that all the thread can always rewrite the values and this is not what you actually wish to have in this <coughs> in this situation with threads my personal advice think sequentially make solution a sequential of the type because we think sequentially humans and then if you have sequential solution derive a solution which is not sequential one because you basically will work with things like uh, what of the thread which of which of the thread allow it to lock the data and then to unlock the data and in which situation you can uh, avoid the locking by all of the threads because you have situations where you have many threads trying to access at one at the same point one variable of data of, or instance of data basically and i recommend you should work it through the sequential example and then you, when you know what your actors are you can make a thread one solution but threads are basically uh, can be very complicated because each thread runs separately and they are not in sync with each other you can you can make threads in sync but it will cost you some performance because if you have a shareable uh, value data type between threads it can bring you to the situation when all threads trying to access one shareable value and it can it, it should be avoided at any case but my major point about threads uh, first you write sequential solution and then you derive a solution where you can use the threads and this is the best advice which you, i can give you about the threads it is pity that the book did not have this chapter about threads and i'm basically covering it right now uh, if you don't understand right now how the threads working this is pretty okay look up the information in the internet there are enough uh, good examples and if you're not sh even after that not sure look up additional books about these topics but i i'm really convinced that this book is a book for people who actually don't want to get uh, stopped by the theory of object-oriented programming or some semantics of this programming language and you can of course you can be very successful at what you're doing but major point if you see the road road block at what you're learning try to look up in the internet another examples try to find another better solutions and you will be successful 
I basically sincerely cannot uh, recommend this book because it has to me uh, a, an impression of pretty uh, very rushed uh, book which was not actually given a big time to make sure that is uh, teachable in such a way that you can basically learn it in like linearly like one topic to another topic to another topic you have parts which can be really uh, depressing or deprecated basically about like unity stuff uh, unity itself can continuous development the editor of unity sometimes di um, differentiate from version to version not big hopefully but it is uh, always uh, I think a challenge if you use in the book Unity uh, that you challenge by different versions of Unity. One, one which is in the book and one which is in the actually what you have installed on your machine. My recommendation is uh, like if you don't find menus or descriptions of what book describing to skip and uh, come back later. Yeah. But I sincerely cannot recommend this book. I wish I, I would recommend this book, but really this book for the people who al already have a grip at some programming practices and just want to renew or add to the tool, tool, uh, tool <laughs> tooling uh, knowledge which you have. But in, for the newbie, it's a big stretch. It's a really big stretch and maybe it's necessary i don't argue about that if you if you my advice about the books final advice if you got a book and you work with the book finish the book don't jump finish the book and then you gain some knowledge and experience through the book and basically this is it if you have a uh, request for some particular topics, I would create at some point those uh, topics explanations, but um, I think it is enough information already on the internet and I just make sure that I provide my point of view and I pinpoint how you can do it even better. So thank you for watching and have a good time. Bye bye.